Mulan is a live-action adaptation of the 1998 animated film of the same name, which in turn is an adaptation of a 1,500-year-old Chinese folklore story called Ballad of Mulan. Weta Digital, Image Engine, Framestore, Sony Pictures, Imageworks and Crafty Apes all had a hand in bringing this tale to life. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll show you how you can learn all of these industry-level techniques for free on one of the world's most bustling learning platforms. Skillshare. To build the Imperial City, Weta Digital went to the back lot at XY Studios in China, where they have a set of a medieval Chinese city that's about one third of a mile by one third of a mile. And there they did the largest LiDAR scan they had ever done to date. From this scan, they could recreate the XY Studios medieval city back lot digitally. Then they took these CG buildings they had created and basically cut them up into sections, similar to building blocks. These sections were then put into a layout system they had developed in Houdini that can procedurally generate buildings using different combinations of these building blocks they had created. By studying historical maps and the layout of the city of Changyan, which was from around the same time and about the same size, they gained information so they could make a rule set for their layout tool to know where the richer areas were, where temples should be, and basically govern the general layout of the city. This system allowed them to quickly create Create, edit and adjust the entire city as a whole, rather than going in and edit it building by building. For a lot of scenes, Mulan's horse, Black Wind, was indeed a real horse being ridden by the lead actress, and the action was done practically. But for some scenes, like the avalanche escape scene, it would have been impossible to do it practically, and so Sony Pictures Imageworks had to do it digitally. But rather than try to dress a horse up in a green morph suit and stick it in front of a green screen, they used a mechanical horse dressed in green fabric and set that in front of the green screen backdrop. They filmed the actress going through the riding motions with high-powered fans blowing her hair. This mechanical horse and backdrop were then digitally removed and substituted with SPI's CG horse and CG avalanche background. To create the CG horse, the VFX team took a 3D scan of the real Blackwind horse. They then built a skeleton so they could animate it and added muscle and fat layers to simulate the firing of the muscle under the skin and the jiggle of the fat whilst the horse was in motion. For the hair, they developed a new proprietary hair grooming tool called Fiber that allowed them to create, edit and adjust the hairs in real time. Once the animation of the horse was complete, it went through a dynamic hair, muscle and cloth simulation before being lit and composited together. In addition to work on Mulan's home, detailed 2.5D digital map paintings for Mulan's training sequences, and digitally recreating a low-resolution drone shot of the terrace rice paddies, Image Engine did quite a lot of CG animal work too. A CG chicken that had to appear alongside real chickens in the same shot meant it had to pass the Pepsi test. Image Engine basically just put their CG chicken next to a real chicken and tweaked it until you couldn't tell the difference. Two CG rabbits were also made. These were based on a taxidermy mount that was filmed on set under the same lighting. They also had to build some CG horses to substitute the platforms that Bori Ken and his clan jumped from during their attack on the desert garrison. Image Engine had to build and extend various locations in the film. For the Roran warrior encampment, they had to model CG tents on the three practical tents that were in the original plates, build eight different agents for the crowds, and add CG horses for which they reused assets created for the Bori Ken attack scene. The mountain garrison and the desert garrison were actually shot on the same set in New Zealand. The VFX team used different set extensions, different internal designs and layouts, and different 2.5D DMPs to create the illusion of two completely different locations.
Extensive set extensions were carried out throughout the film, but perhaps one of the biggest was in the final battle scene. To extend the battlefield, Sony Pictures Imageworks combined a LiDAR scan of the filming location with drone footage of the area to give them a detailed map of the area as well as the grass, rock and scrub textured details that they could later use for their CG extensions. They then added molded assets and CG smoke to complete the battlefield look. For the mountains in the background, they had a helicopter film footage of a mountain in New Zealand that had the central valley running down through the middle of it and the height that the director wanted. And using that as reference, they created the CG model. Then they added the CG snow and rocks, grass and scrub with the same texture details obtained from the drone footage to marry it with the foreground. The avalanche at the end of the final battle required Sony Pictures Imageworks to build a new system inside Houdini to simulate ice and snow called Katyusha. This system allowed them to make a volumetric approach to the avalanche simulation. They then referenced real avalanche footage to understand what makes it move the way it does. This allowed artists to be creative and speed it up or slow it down for artistic reasons without making it look unrealistic. SPI then simulated many different passes to ensure flexibility during compositing. Are you looking to learn more about how to create outstanding VFX, level up on your animation skills or just update your Photoshop techniques for absolutely free? Then don't miss out on our special discount of Skillshare where you can learn all of this and more. I wanted to stay up to date with my Photoshop skills so I took a class with Andre Oprinka and quickly learned how wrong I was using smart objects and the right way to mask out hair. I can honestly see why more and more people are choosing Skillshare to learn techniques the right way. So if you're one of the first 1,000 to click the link in the description, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership, less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So don't miss out on this limited offer and give Skillshare a try today for free. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description. And be sure to let us know in the comments which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next. Thanks for watching.